Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, this is Pastor Dale. It is Friday. It is the 2nd of February. And I don't know about where you're at, but in Maryland, where I'm at in Maryland, North uh, Frederick, which is north of Baltimore in D.C., um, just a little cloudy or mostly cloudy. It's a little bit of sun here and there. Nice and cool up. Yesterday, I had posted a video um, dealing with biting one another, biting and devouring one another, according to Galatians 5.15. Paul wanted to know why are we continuing to bite and devour, you know, one another, uh, knowing that it's going to it's gonna ruin us. And throughout the ages, um, I think the church has kind of had that reputation. Um, we have been biting and devouring each other for years. And as a result, of course, there's been a lot of division in the church and so on and so forth. And, and what a shame uh, that this has happened. And that's what I want to talk to you today about is unity. Um, when I think about the original church started after the, after Jesus was resurrected and ascended to heaven, uh, the church started with, you know, Peter, John, James, and and, and the gang. Uh, I guess you could call it a gang. But he started with all of them. And there was so much unity back then. It was just, it was incredible, you know, what the church was doing. It says that signs and wonders were following them. And the reason they was following them was because they were all working together. They were one body. They were one unity. They weren't separated. And isn't it a shame that over the years that the Christian body um, has become as disorganized and split up the way it has? Uh, just look at all the different denominations and religions we have today. You know, you have the Protestants, you have the Catholic, and it just so much goes on. Uh, in the Protestants, you you know got churches that are uh, fighting one another. For example, the Methodist Church, the the, the thing that's going on there right now, uh, the split that's that's coming about there, all because of this LGB, whatever that thing is. And isn't it a shame that that a church is dividing over a sinful act, a sinful nature, uh, or a sinful entity? What do you want to call it? Um, knowing that in God's eyes that homosexuality is an abomination. And I and I don't care whether people ding me for this or not because I, I state that. It doesn't make any difference. God's word rules and God, God's word reigns. And it's, it's number one in my life. And I'm going to continue claiming the gospel of Jesus Christ for as long as I live upon this earth. You know, I, I don't know how many more days or months or weeks or minutes or seconds I have left. Um... I know that next week I'll be turning 78, and if I turn 88, 98, I'm still going to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and the fact that if you're caught up in sinful lifestyles, you need to stop. You need to repent. You need to get rid of that stuff and get it out of your life forever. And the only way that's going to happen is through Jesus Christ. But anyways, such things like that is what's caused the church and division in church, and it shouldn't be. You know, apparently division was something, uh, separation, or not, I should say, not being unified is something that was on Jesus' heart. Because when you look at uh, at his prayer in John 17, this is the real Lord's Prayer. I mean, the prayer that he said in Matthew 6, the beautiful prayer, it's a model prayer. But this is the Lord's Prayer. They called it the Lord's Prayer, but it wasn't. This is the Lord's Prayer in John 17. But in verse 21, this is what Jesus prayed. Jesus said that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. See, the body of Christ, you know, we're, we're a part of his body. And as a part of his body, it means that God dwells with us. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. I think it's in uh, Colossians, one of my favorite verses in chapter 1. It talks about, um, uh, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And and when you think about Christ in us, it means that Christ is working in all of us. If we would all become unified, if we would all just get together and start agreeing on the fact that the gospel message has to get out. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about his death. It's all about his uh, death on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, the washing with the, his blood uh, from our sins, and it's about giving our lives to him and having eternal life as a result. That's what the gospel message is about. It's not about all this division that we're, we're seeing going on and taking place, and it should not be. And there's, there's not one church any better than any other church. 
God's not a partial a God of partiality. He's not a God who shows favoritism, you know, to one denomination over another, one religion over another. He doesn't do that. God's not like that. Okay, so I got looking at a few scriptures, and I want to I want to you know talk about a couple of scriptures. First of all, let's go back to when the church first started back in the Book of Acts. Um, it says in Acts one fourteen. These all with one mind were continually devoted themselves to prayer along with the women and Mary and the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. It was all about one mind, one purpose, one focus, one body. Amen? Acts 2.1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Why? Because the Spirit was going to fill all of them at one time with himself. Amen? Acts 4.32. And the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. It's all about unity. It's all about working together and coming together. Acts 5, verse 12. Now, one of the things that Dr. Tony Evans, I listened to him this morning, uh, had talked about was unity. And uh, as a fact, this week's teaching uh, that he's been doing has been on unity and, and and how we can how the church can you know can be unified and one of the questions asked him is well how come we're not doing the miracles and signs and wonders that they did back in the first days of the church and it's very simple dr evans said very simple we're they had unity we don't have unity you know we're all separated in our different ways and so lax 512s verify what he said at the hands of the apostles many signs and wonders were taking place among the people, and they were all with one accord. It's all about unity. It's all about one in Christ Jesus. And uh, there's so much to this. In 1 Corinthians 1.10, Paul says, I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. 2 Corinthians 13.11. Finally, brethren, rejoice, be made complete, be comfort, com comforted, be like-minded, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Uh, you know, and there's, there's, there's just so much more in the book of Ephesians. Uh, Paul writes there, he says, For he himself, meaning Jesus, is our peace, who made both, both groups into one. In other words, the Jew and the Gentile made into one, unity. And broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. There should not be anything dividing the body of Christ. You know, if I was a uh, a new Christian today and I was listening and looking around on, on YouTube and seeing all the the chaos on there and how the church is splitting, how the church is pastors accusing other pastors and uh, condemning other pastors and putting other pastors down, uh, other ministries and so on and so forth. As, as I said yesterday, that's not their job. That's God's job. Job is God is the one that's going to take care of all that stuff. Not you, Pastor. Your job is to pray for them and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just like it's my job to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to point things out like this. And then, but did you know that that um, unity can be so strong and it bring about victory? Let's take a look at Nehemiah. Look at that. They built the wall of what? Fifty-two weeks or fifty-two days was it? Fifty-two days. They rebuilt the wall and the doors and all. Fifty-two days. Why? Unity. They all worked together. It's the same with um, uh, King Jehoshaphat when he was uh, Israel was being um, uh, Judah was being being attacked by three different countries. All right, three different uh, armies. They all worked together. And they came together in prayer and fasting. And as a result, they had complete victory because there was unity. They were unified. And then when you look in the book of Judges, uh, chapter 20, verse 11, it says, Thus all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, united as one man. And what happened? They had complete victory over the enemy. See, unity is strong. God loves unity. That's why the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all work together. They are one. You know, there's a big thing going on now about the Trinity doctrine. You know, forget about doctrines. Just remember that it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And they all work together. They're unified. And we need to do that as the church. The church needs to stop bad-mouthing one another, uh, 
getting on there thinking that you're better than some other pastor or so on and so forth, we need to stop that. The church needs to come together in Jesus Christ. Amen? This is Pastor Dale. Have a great day. And remember, love one another and be unified. God bless you. See you later. Bye.